here we are for the ACE Q&A for September. September 2015. Let's thank the people who sent in the questions this month. All right, so we got Xander, Knight, EDM, Taru, who just joined us, uh, joined the forums this month, actually. Uh, Waikikamukau, which I think we actually have figured out how to say that name. Uh, Nakawe and Failboat. Failboat. Failboat now forever immortalized by the fact that he won his first match the first time we let external backers in. He's he also the, the last number, man standing. He's the number two in overall kills for really? the Hungry Dogs. And we so haven't much. given him key bindings yet, so he swears he's going to get better. So that yeah, means so. Steve and Nick are in trouble. <laughs> I'm a little worried. Yeah, it also means i got to stop naming my character something Todd, because well, that puts a giant target on my back. I think it means everyone needs to up their game, too. Yeah, that's probably true. Because that was his second and third time. Like, his first series of games, he hit all these goals. Yeah, so uh, there you go. Well done. So, All right, thanks for the questions, guys, and let's get to it. Will players have access to create their own campaign rule sets? Okay, so this is actually a great one. We've talked about yeah. this some internally. So the question is basically, can I do mods, right? Like yeah. Modding is a, a, a really cool thing. So the challenge is our architecture doesn't really lend itself to mods. I love the idea of players being able to play with the rule sets if we could find a way to make it work. So I guess my first answer is for launch, absolutely not. Like right. we got our plate full. <laughs> We're not going to be adding anything like that for launch. Later down the line, could we come up with a mechanism to allow people to do basically test campaigns where they could modify the rules, yep. and uh, obviously we'd have to block off the embargo. They couldn't import and export, or it would bleed over. Into sure, I'm sure there's lots or, of little things that we'd have to um, do as well. Uh, but yeah, the idea is cool. So I guess my generic statement is, after launch, if and when the game is successful and now pulling in enough money to allow us to grow it, I'm totally open to finding... We all love mods as developers. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. It's, I mean, the whole genres have, have come up from, like, Warcraft absolutely. mods, right? Yeah. So, yes, we are down with mods. So, But not before launch. Yeah, not before launch. What's your current goal for expected battle sizes? So, okay, so wow. we just, uh, this morning, actually, the press release went out for the Hunger Dome. Yep. And so that's our first combat test, which uh, right now is limited to... 48. 48 players in a match. Obviously, that is not our long-term goal, no. but that is our current... Uh, that's our starting. you got to start that's somewhere. It's our, our starting point. So, uh, I, I don't know if you and I have actually talked about this at length. I've always thought that 2,000 to 2,500 is a great concurrency number for a server as a whole, which implies uh, battles of hundreds of people. Right. Right. Um, so I guess that would, without getting too specific, and this is one of those things that really, until, we'll have to figure out at the end of the project, like right. what is actually feasible, but as a target goal, I would say 2,000. That's a great, I mean, most concurrent. MMOs start at that anyway, yep. so it's a great starting point for us to start dialing those knobs. There you go. Are confessors able to dash while jumping through the air? Can ranged attacks be made in midair? So can you jump well, or can you shoot powers while in the air was one of the questions I heard in there. Right? Yes. You can't do most powers in the air. We have flagged them all to require you to be on the ground. However, I have seen confessors going from wall to wall in the keep. Sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty cool, actually. You just see him, you're like, damn it, I was chasing him, and he jumped over to the inner keep. It looks really cool. So the other half of the question then was... Um... I actually can't remember. Yeah. So there was another half of the <laughs> we question. We both forgot it. So, which was... Are confessors able to dash while jumping through the air? No. Most of our attacks, like I said, can't be made in midair. It's a specialty thing. We don't want you falling and bombing like fireballs and all that crazy stuff from above. So here, here's the thing. We're right on the brink of you guys actually seeing the game being streamed by your fellow backers. So a lot of these questions, um, I think the answer is not going to make a lot of sense without context. So the good news is you're about to have right. that context. Like you're on the brink of being able to see the game, and a number of you will be on the brink of actually in uh, playing with us. Yeah, in in playing. Actually, starting this afternoon, we're going to have a, another test. So, um, so I, I think why don't we kind of wait on the mobility stuff and let's have a conversation about it. Say in a couple weeks or next month, sure. once players have actually gotten in and they can say, okay, you said it was going to be like this and it didn't really work out that well, but this over here actually is pretty cool. So have you tried this? I mean, at that point, I think we can have an actual dialogue. Right now it's very hard because we have all of the, you know, we know what works and doesn't and, and we have opinions. Yeah. Nobody else really has opinions that are based on it. We have context more than they do. Right. So, so you'll see in a month. Is the game in first person shooter mode? third-person mode, or a combination of both? Our camera is multi-stage, so we yes. have multiple stages that you can go to. But it's but primarily a third-person camera. Primarily, and when you even zoom in all the way, it's more of a zoom-in and not your traditional, 
I have FPS hands there and I'm holding a gun. And well, things. it's not intended to be played, right, first person. The only time that I see first person actually really come up in the game is if I back up against a wall and right. the camera has nowhere to go. So it auto zooms in. And, and the as intent soon as is, I move, it yeah. comes back out. If you're in a tunnel, if you're in a house, that's the intent. Not that I'm going to sit there with my hands and a gun and or a bow shooting yeah. things. So too long, didn't read, didn't listen, yeah. uh, third person. <laughs> Why did you choose these three archetypes to be the combatants for the Hunger Dome? That is an excellent question. They're nice. the most awesome ones. Well, I mean, because <laughs> they're completely overpowered. <laughs> they're all, yes. No, uh, so we wanted a nice mix, right? So you got to yep. start somewhere. So we started with the knight because he's like the most. In fact, you'll notice like we always seem to start with the knight. It was our first concept. He's always it was the our coolest first model too. Texture. I mean, it was the first set of equipment. He like, gets all the new toys. Right. So we put in the knight first. He's our defensive character. Right. Man melee. So then we wanted one that was magic ranged. So confessor Professor. was obvious. Yep. And then uh, I forced centaur because centaurs are awesome and Todd I loves like centaurs. Them. So well, I, ironically, I don't play the centaur, but I do love them. I just think they're cool. You love so, the idea of them. Yeah, I love the idea of them. So and that this, is our first support guy. It's our first support guy, and also because it's one that, quite frankly, when you see it in the game running around, it immediately you know the game that you're looking at is crowfall because right. other people don't do that, right? So I wanted to. That's it's a risk item. I wanted to pull it forward because the earlier you tackle your risks, the more time you have to play and iterate on getting them right, right. But between now and launch. So. Well, and the team is perfect, right? If you get a, a, one of each on a team, right. you have your ranged nuker, you have your healer, and you have your uh, knight. Yeah, guy. unless you log in and your teammates immediately run to the hunger, which is what happened <laughs> to me last night. Yes. Like they just turned around and ran right into the hunger. So. <laughs> and then you don't have whatever that class And then, then the team is not perfect at all. Yeah. The team is flawed. So there you go. Yeah, that's it. What's wrong with the Confessor's Flames of Truth and the current iteration of the Hunger Dome? Uh, so Flames of Truth power. Actually, it is functional. Like, it, it works is, It's great. a working power. Yes. Um, but it is one of those that you have to understand how it works. Correct. It seems like it's broken. And, and, you know, maybe we can clear up with some effects and shaders that we just got online. But essentially, Flames of Truth is a bomb. You put a bomb on the opponent, and in 10 seconds, it's going to explode and stun them. It has another combo, which can instantly detonate the bomb. Right. And if you miss the detonation... The bomb's still going to go off however many seconds. You just missed instantly detonating. Right. Now, the instant detonation does make the stun last less and do less damage because you're forcing a stun. Oh, my God, I need to stun him now. Yeah. Right? But if you let the bomb go all the way out, it's going to do more damage and stun them. Just yeah. wait 10 seconds. So, but even if you're not on the screen, it's going off. Oh, it's so, going so off. So, it may seem like nothing happened, but that's not accurate. Correct. So. Cool. There you go. How are the Legionnaire's rage mechanics working in the Hunger Dome. So the rage mechanic on the Centaur is working, but I'm mm -hmm. glad that this question came up because a lot of people log in and the first thing they see is a, 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 a power bar. bar that's black. Right. And they're like, I can't use my powers. This, this archetype is broken. And that's not true. It nope. actually is, is working. So the, the Centaur uses a rage mechanic and you have to pound on people to build up enough rage to yep. power your powers. Um, and when you first come in, you haven't done that, so you start with none. Correct. Or press C for a big chunk of instant rage. Right, so you do have one power on the C key where yep. that'll give you a chunk of rage instantly, but it's got a long cooldown. So you yep. better then start smacking on people to keep your rage level up, or you're going to find yourself unable to use your powers. Well, that's how it works. All right, so that was the Dev Partners Q&A for uh, September. Crowfall for September 2015. Yep. Um, thank you guys for the questions. I'm sure that as we get into the Hunger Dome matches, we will have a host of new questions that pop up. So yes. looking forward to the questions you guys submit for next month, and we'll see you. We'll see you next month. Yep, see you next month. Thanks.